going on with the music, with the sound. Isn't it good to be in the house one more time? Yeah. Lord. Yes, 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 yes. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. You didn't wake yourself up this morning. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory. He woke us up. He woke us up. Who am I talking about? He. Can somebody tell me who's he? Hallelujah. Y'all on it? Who gave us freedom? Jesus. I know it's Independence Day, but you know what? Jesus paid it all for us. And I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. I can't thank him enough. Because he did it just for me and just for you. I thank God for it. We're going to go into prayer. Um, if you're able to stand, if you're not, we understand that. Um, whatever the way the Holy Spirit leads you. Dear Heavenly Father, once again I stand in your humble presence. Knowing, God, that you have been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Dear God, all I can say is thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. When I think of the goodness that you have given to us, I can say thank you. Thank you, Lord. You've been a provider, and I thank you. You've been a way maker, and I thank you. You've been a healer, and I thank you. You've been a protector, and I thank you. I can't thank you enough. Once again, dear Lord, we come before you, bowing our heads in your presence, saying, God, you are a great God. You are a great God. And I say it again and again, you are a great God. There's no one greater than you, God. There's no one that can stand in your shoes but you, God. And I thank you for that. I thank you for dying on the cross for us. You did it just for us. And I can't thank you and I can't praise you enough. Lord, this high noon as our pastor says, I want to thank you for allowing us to see a 4th of July. We did not have to be here, but you did it, oh God. We celebrate independence of the ones that died for us, the ones that went into the service, and some of them didn't come home. Just like with the COVID last year, some of them are not able to come in here because they didn't make it. But Lord, I'm praying that they made it up there with you because that's the best place to be. <laughs> ah, in your presence, there's fullness of joy, oh God. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for our pastor and our first lady. I thank you, God, because they're an awesome example of what it is to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. And I thank you. I thank you for my church family. I thank you for my friends. I thank you for my family, Lord. I'm calling each and every one of them in. Say, what must I do to be saved? And I know you're doing that just now. Lord, I thank you for the ones that are going through an hour of bereavement. It hurts, oh God, when you bereave. There's a grief that no one can tell you until you walk through those doors. But I know God, late in the midnight hour, in the day, 24-7, as they say, we can call on you, God, and you'll hear and answer our prayer. You'll give us comfort in the midnight hour. you give us comfort in the day. you give us comfort in noon. And Lord, you just say, call on me, and I will show you great and mighty things. Lord, this day... Please be with everyone. Let them be safe, God. Let them know that you are going to protect them, but they must use wisdom in what they say and what they do. Lord, we just thank you for this day, and as we go through this service, oh God, let someone say, I must come to Jesus and change my life. I must do what the Lord says for me to do. I can't wait on anyone else. I must come running. And say, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify you. For you are a true and living Savior. 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name I pray. Amen. saints I said hallelujah saints glory be to God glory be to God on high hallelujah because he's worthy I said he's worthy to be praised because you're not here haphazardly uh-uh you're here for a reason huh you are here for a reason God set forth for us to be here on today and I love him on today. And I'm going to read the scripture. Isaiah 25 and 1. It says, Lord, you are my God. And I will exalt you. And praise your name. For in, for in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things. Things planned long ago. We don't need anybody to... I would call it predicate our praises on today. I think that's the right word to use. Predicate our praises. We need no one to initiate our praise. We don't need to look at one another to wait on a sign to praise God. Hallelujah. Because he's been good. He's been good to us. Hallelujah. If anybody know and understand and experience the goodness of God, praise the Lord right now. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Just keep praising Him. Hallelujah. Keep praising Him, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. The Lord is high above the heavens, and is glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens, and is glory above the nations. Give God the highest praise, acknowledge Him always, and all the people say, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah! Halle, Halle, Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Oh, the Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. Hey, the Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. Give God the highest praise. Acknowledge him always. And all the people say, Halle, halle, hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 H
hallelujah, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You took the ultimate challenge, Lord, and you showed us how much you loved us. That's why we love you back. Every time I think about you, every time I read about you, every time I hear your name, I start to smile. Every time the sun starts shining, every time the wind starts blowing, every time I feel your anointing, I start to smile Let me take the time to say I love you Let me take the time to say I care Every time I think about you Every time I read about you Every time I read about you Every time I hear your name Every time I hear your name I start to smile Every time the sun starts shining Every time the sun starts shining Every time the wind starts blowing Every time I feel your anointing Every time I feel your anointing I start to smile Oh, let me take the time to say I love you. Let me take the time to say I care. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I
in love with Jesus. Forget about your neighbor. This is you and Jesus moment. Oh, come on. I'm in love with Jesus. And he's in love with me. I'm in love with Jesus. And he's in love with me. I'm in love with Jesus. Oh, he's in love with me. Oh, I'm in love with Jesus. Somebody say yes, 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 celebrate Independence Day. In these United States of America, we thank you for the liberty that we have in this country. Freedom of religion. Freedom to gather together and not be ashamed to say that we love you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for this liberty on today. Thank you. For everyone in the building, everyone that's streaming live, thank you. The Lord, for all of us that have met Christ, that have accepted Him, what independence we have now surpasses all understanding. So help us today to just be free. Free to sing and dance, free to wave our hands, free to shout unto you, glory, 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 Lord. All the glory, all the honor, it belongs to you. And I just want to tell you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this moment. It's your moment. 
Speak to your servant. Give me what to say and how to say it. Let there be a church filled with those that have ears to hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Now, I promise you, I'll give you all praise, all credit, all glory, all honor at the beginning. And when it's over and when it's said and it's done, all the praise, credit, glory, and honor belongs unto you, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And everyone said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Come on, shout one more time. Glory! Shout hallelujah! Come on and shout, thank you, Jesus! Come on, throw your head way back and shout, Ooh! Woo! Hallelujah! Y'all can be seated if you can. I don't know about y'all. I, I, I feel a my, 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 my. I'm not leaving here to go get drunk. I already got drunk. <laughs> hey, I'm already tipsy right now, Mr. Thomas. I'm like, you know what? If I say Jesus too many more times, I'm liable to fall out like that. Y'all know some people going to fall out today, but they're going to be under the wrong spirit. <laughs> no, ain't nothing like getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. They kept saying Jesus, and they, they kept saying yes. Minister Greg, they kept on until y'all took us to another level. How many feel better since you walked in? Oh, I tell you, if you can't go to church and feel better, something wrong. Amen. I changed churches. See ya. I'm going to go find me one that gets me drunk. Huh. Forget about all the inhibitions and all of the restrictions. And how many know drunk people don't even care who in the room? You ever been around them? They, they don't even care. How many know drunk people are friendly people? Come on, y'all act friendly. Everybody say, speak to somebody close to you. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> hey, glory to God. Amen. Whew. If you can't go to church and be free, I don't know where you can go. Amen. I don't know about y'all. I don't like I don't like proper church. <laughs> Mm -mm. I like that high five in church. Yeah, man. That's good right there. Amen. Somebody said, just silly all by yourself. You just you get drunk, you don't care. Be lecter sliding. Ain't found a beat nowhere, but you, you drunk, so you don't care. Come on, somebody shout in this place. Glory. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. This is 4th of July, Independence Day for these United States of America. Come on, let's thank God for Independence Day. Come on, let's thank God that in 8, I mean, 1776, we broke away from the control of England and became an independent nation. Somebody said, our own shot caller. <laughs> Ruling our own selves. What a blessing. So I'm here to celebrate 4th of July, Independence Day. It just happened to fall on a Sunday. And I still thought I would go to church on an Independence Sunday. What about some of y'all? Huh? So when I eat some ribs later on today, I won't be guilty like I should have went to church. <laughs> you are never coming for all the folks to stay home. How are you going to be sitting here eating and enjoying and you didn't even go and worship? Somebody say, you ain't going to have nothing on us. Come on here. <laughs> we went ahead and, 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 and just lifted up. Come on, let's thank God for Minister Noah and Minister John, Brother Di. Amen. You see, I drafted me a praise team to go with him, didn't you? Come on, let's thank God for our first lady and T 
Teacher Lucas, <laughs> Mr. Craig Philpott. Hey, Amen. I like being in charge. I can just do it my way. Yes. Yes. Hey, this is Minister Noah's third service today. And I could tell he was struggling to get it out. But he was pushing all he had. Hey, Amen. He was pushing it. Yeah, I said, let me get him some help here to help him. Thank you, God. Thank God, Minister Noah and Minister JT. Amen. They was at our 9 o'clock service, and then they had another service between this service, and now they're here for this service. Amen. Some people won't go one time. Amen. Sometimes people will ask me, why do I go two services on Sunday in the banner, then back to Danville? Because I used to do triple time for the devil, Sister Candy. So I said, I got to at least do double time for Jesus. Come on, y'all. Y'all ain't going to tell the truth. Y'all all saved and all lovely. But you remember when you used to leave on Friday, you didn't come back to early Monday morning just in time to go to work. <sighs> Now I got to ask somebody for some coffee money because I didn't let the devil strip me of everything. Am I right? Now y'all know when we were partying, we would party till we didn't have no money left and then we start borrowing money on credit. I want one more drink, bartender. Now you know me. <laughs> he said, yeah, I know you. You never pay. You never, you never pay. Get out. I do want to talk to us a few minutes, and we'll let y'all go, and we'll have our Holy Communion at the end, uh, but I want to talk to you today about your independence in Christ, amen? July the 4th is Independence Day, but Resurrection Day is independence from sin. Come on, shout glory. When you accept Jesus, you are now independent from sin. Just like we broke away from England, when you accept Christ, you break away from the devil. He ain't your boss no more. England is over there, we over here, and they ain't got no say so in the matter. Come on, shout glory. So right now, if you are a believer in Christ, you are independent of the devil. Don't get it twisted, y'all. His whole purpose for coming was to set the captives free that's what this whole thing about being a Christian is about being free so you don't have to do the things you don't want to do but when you are a slave when you are bought by somebody else and they own you they can tell you to do whatever and you have to do it but it's a trick if you're in the church and you're still doing what the devil say amen if you still let him run your business, he is illegal. Somebody say he's a criminal. He don't have any rights to your life. That's why we are Christians. It means what? I am a disciple of Christ. I'm a follower of Jesus. If I'm going to be owned by anybody, let me be owned by Jesus. Why? Because he's the best master you could ever have come on i read the book he said i bless you going out and i bless you coming in and i give you more than you got room enough to receive i tell you you don't have to fight no more just stand back and watch me whoop the devil and everybody to mess with you come on somebody shout glory i put food on your table when you're hungry i put clothes on your back when you're naked i'll hear your body when you sick come on somebody shout glory I don't know about y'all, but I feel like shouting in this place. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, how many know when you, when you get to thinking of the goodness of Jesus, you don't need nobody to tell you to go off. Amen. You know, somebody else might be sober beside you, and they're just looking at you, but you, you don't care. Cause... Amen. I uh, seen you, Sister Chantel. Small fall, smooth out. 
She was doing all this. And she kept thinking about yes, and, and Jesus loved me all night. And I ain't mad at you. If if the truth would have been told, if we wasn't so proud and sober, we would have fell out with her. <laughs> but we like, Lord bless her, bless her, Lord, Lord bless her. <laughs> hey, I love Jesus enough that I fall out all by myself. <laughs> Christ has given us the reason for the resurrection was for your freedom. He got up out of the grave to free us from the bondage of sin. Is there any free people in here today? Is there anybody in here can say, Lord, I thank you that I'm not bound anymore. There's a lot of people that are searching to get free, but they're looking in the wrong places. There's nothing wrong going with therapy. There's nothing wrong with going to the, uh, the counselors. There's nothing wrong with going to the, the drug clinic and all of that. That's good. But if you go to Jesus, he's the best counselor. Come on, somebody. He's the best teacher. Come on, somebody. How many know he know why you act the way you act? He ain't got a guess. Some of those psychiatrists and counselors, they try to they ask you more questions than they're giving you answers. And what else is wrong with you? You're supposed to be telling me. <laughs> but when you go to Jesus how many know he'll let you know you got a hurt from way back when you was a little girl you got a pain from when you was a little boy come on here you still dealing with the absence of a daddy you still wish your mama was somebody come on here you hate you went through an abortion you hate you went to jail You oh but the Lord is standing right there saying I got you shout glory Oh, y'all can't take Jesus from me. I, I'm telling you, he's the only one I know, no TM better than anybody. Know all my business, and he still said, come on, preach for me this morning. I said, Lord, have mercy. You so good to me? If y'all even had an idea I'd done something wrong, it'd be a line out there, and it wouldn't be to come in and be a picket sign. He ain't right. <laughs> he ain't right. And the Lord said, I know he ain't right, but I made him my righteousness. Shout glory. Come on, we'll get y'all out of here. I almost went over. I did probably go over in the banner because I was enjoying it so much. But in your Bibles, and hopefully they can put it on the big screens, Romans 8, 1 and 2. Romans 8, 1 and 2. The 8th chapter and the 1st and 2nd verse. And on the screen you are here, or here you'll see it. Romans 8 and 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Stop right there. Don't read the rest. Stop right there. And I was teaching Wednesday night Bible study about mother. To mother is to repeat something over and over and over again. When you get into real meditation, the God kind of meditation, it's not yoga. It's not, um, no. It's not yoga. When you into what the Bible says, meditate on my word day and night, you absolutely should be thinking about something in the Bible. His word. Come on, let's mutter. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Mother. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Mother. Therefore, uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Mother. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. You know why you mutter? Because you got to get it out of your head and get it in your heart. You got to get out of intellectual because intellectual is always challenging God's word. You always try, we always try to analyze it to make it make sense to us. And so when you mutter it in 10 and 17 of Romans, it says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so when you repeat it and you repeat it and you repeat it, how I many know it'll come from your head to your heart? Because what a man believes in his heart. Not this blood pumper, but in your spirit. 
And the way that God says that you and I will become men and women of faith, we must meditate on his word day and night. How many know you can mutter while you're washing dishes? The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Huh. While you cutting the grass, digging loud, you can say, what? There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And about that time, you make your lawnmower do a willy. There is now no condemnation. Are we talking about freedom today? Are we talking about independence from sin? We all free, every one of us in here, because Jesus died for every one of us in here. If you haven't accepted it, it don't mean he didn't do it. It only means you haven't muttered enough. <laughs> you got to get it in your heart that this day of national celebration of independence is nowhere near the freedom you have in Christ. Come on, somebody, shout glory. If you understand your freedom in Christ, you can go anywhere in the world and say, I'm free. Oh, y'all got your rules and regulations in every part of the world, but I'm free. Every country, every continent I walk on, Christ died for me and made me free everywhere I go. Whew. Amen. Hmm. Let's finish that eighth, uh, the first verse here. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Do you know you can put your own self back in bondage? Even though Christ has made you free, if you decide to do fleshly things, you decide to go ahead and get drunk, then you can find yourself in jail again. You can see your license snatched again. Christ can do that. But when we chase fleshly things, we condemn ourselves. Hello? We are free in Christ, but if we do things that are not lawful in the sight of God or man, we can put ourselves back in bondage. Does that make sense? There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, somebody. After the spirit, the second verse, come on, let's get that. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ uh, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Marinate, hesitate, hold up, chew some more. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. What that mean, Lord? He said, keep reading. Uh, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. The, the listen now, if there's a law, that means you have to be submitted to it. Right? The purpose of the law is to give you restrictions, to give you limitations, to tell you how far you can go and what you can do. So, Jesus, hallelujah, come on, shout in this place. <laughs> the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Come on, shout glory. Look at this, y'all. He's made me free from the law of sin. Somebody say, that law of sin is not applicable to me anymore. I'm not under the law of sin. In other words, I do not have to be submitted to the law of sin. In other words, I don't have to sin because that law does not apply to me because Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. My God, my God. Lord, I'm free. Thank God Almighty. I'm free. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The law of sin is not. You do. you. Oh, I can't. I mean, got drunk. Y'all help me. <laughs> the law of sin, you free from it. Please don't let the devil trick you and tell you you still got to go out here and act a fool today. You ain't got to cuss nobody out. Come on here. 
We get that new grocery store open, you ain't got to go in there and steal nothing. Hey! Come on! You don't have to go to your job and play like you working. Y'all quiet now. You ain't got to cheat on your husband. You ain't got to cheat on your wife. You don't have to be a slave to a cigarette. I ain't trying to dog nobody. I judge nobody, condemn nobody. I'm trying to help everybody in the room. I'm trying to go down every street and cut way and alley in case someplace you have been bound and the word of God is not to condemn you but to free you. Shout glory. This word is not so you can feel bad. This word is so you can get liberated. You can walk out here like George Jefferson. That's a free man walk right there. He's going home to Wheezy. <laughs> Up on the east side. Finally got my piece of the pie. Hey, beans. Something. Beans don't burn no more. How is it when you get rich your beans don't burn? I don't understand. Let me quit. I'm trying to help us today. Come on, somebody said the law of sin does not apply to me. That is, in other words, you are not bound by the sin of Adam. Adam messed up, but Jesus freed us from the law of Adam, from the sin of Adam. Somebody in this room ought to shout about your independence. Somebody say, I can walk right now. I can talk right. Oh, I know how to treat my neighbor right. I can love my wife and leave your wife alone. Come on, somebody. Shout glory. Know how to be a good daddy. Know how to be a good mama. Know when to come and know when to go. I even know how to shut my mouth when the Lord say, don't say nothing. Shout glory. I'm going to let y'all go about 3 o'clock. Just hold on. <laughs> I heard one person say that's all right. The rest of y'all was going, boo. <laughs> I'm enjoying you, but I ain't enjoying you that much. I mean, <laughs> Come on, let's get some more. Colossians 2 and 10. Oh, this is good. Somebody say, Christ has made me independent of sin. Christ has made me independent of sin. There's no need in us uh, you know, claiming Christ and still be bound by sin. And I know what the most of it is, saints. So Lord, let me know. Most of us are being tricked. There's been so much teaching still in the church about the devil got power and the devil can do this to you. And the devil, no, that's a lie. He can't do nothing to you. That's the truth. He's been stripped of his power. He is absolutely a liar. He's a con man. He's a deceiver. He's a trickster. He's coming to you to convince you that you got to do something crazy. How many know it's the devil tricking our young people, killing in these streets? He's tricking our young people. Can we pray for him, Lord? Save our young people. God, save the young people and the older people. And anyone with a spirit of murder on them. Anyone with a spirit of revenge. A spirit of retaliation. Whatever the enemy is using, Lord, we ask you to have mercy on our community. Oh, my God. Got to limit your freedom because you don't know who's going to snap off. Or what? He looked at me. Bang! Oh, Lord. Did you drive by me on the highway? I, I, this is a highway. I'm going to kill you for that. <laughs> when I'm on the highway, ain't nobody supposed to pass me. It's called road rage. Come on. Somebody say, I'm free from the law of sin. I don't have to sin. I don't have to hurt nobody. Come on, y'all. All I got to do is hold my peace. God will fight my battles. 
How many of you got to be prayed up? You got to be really prayed up because this old body you live in can still get mad, can get uh, offended, can get irritated. But how many know if you sober, you got a whole lot better chance of controlling your flesh. But when you get full of that crazy stuff, you you liable to do anything. You get high enough, drunk enough, you can't control your flesh. And the scripture says, make no provision for the flesh. Somebody said, don't help your crazy. <laughs> Come on, y'all, don't look like y'all all, no, I'm very, very, uh, no, you got some crazy down in there too. <laughs> and somebody pushed the right button, the crazy will come up. Am I right? We saved y'all, but this body is still capable of sinning. And that's what that scripture says. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Where we at? Two and ten? Y'all there? Everybody got a Bible. Everybody can read. You can see that scripture. And ye are complete in him. Who is him? Jesus. Which is the head of all principalities and power. Come on, y'all. Y'all read it again. And ye are complete in him. Are you in him? Are you in Christ? Then you're free. And you're complete. You don't need nothing else. Don't let religion put you in bondage. Hello? A whole bunch of Christians still don't believe they say because the preacher tell them you say but until you do this until you do this until you do this you can't join our church but Jesus already died for me just keep Jesus out of this <laughs> excuse me yes I know Jesus is a good guy and all of that but our church doctrine says until you learn how to jump on one leg, you ain't saying. Now you ain't doing it. <laughs> Here we are on first Sunday. And in a lot of churches, you better have on your black and white if you are an usher or you are deacon. And this supposed, um, excuse me, this is our first lady. <laughs> and she's supposed to have on all white today with a big hat. To all my white brothers and sisters, that's in the black church. Y'all ain't, ain't never been hung up on that. <laughs> in the black church, you better not come in there without your proper attire. Y'all know they know this ain't a church. A lot of folks, you know why? We don't have a communion table. Ooh, I mean, in some of these black churches, you touch that communion table. That table to say, in remembrance of me, there's one person in this church that has been designated to touch the table. And that's Mrs. So-and-so and so-and-so. Don't you see how she's so anointed to set the community? <laughs> and then you have all the deacons line up with their black and white and their white gloves. And the ushers and they're all white and they're coming to... We're going to do communion in a minute. It's going to be real ignorant. It's going to be... Ain't going to be nothing like what you're supposed to do in proper church. So you in the wrong church, keep coming. You, you're free. How many free? Hey, but when you in real religious churches, whoo! You are not saved unless you do certain things. Yes, you should be water baptized, but that's the horse in the front is Jesus and then the cart in the back. But most people say you're not saved until you get water baptized. So what does that mean? You're not saved until you hit the water. And there's a lot of people that give their children at 12 years old for water baptism and earlier ages and the kids are like, Mama, why they dump me in the water? <laughs> Well, just cause you in the church now. How many know we should tell our children that they should accept Christ? And the water baptism is an outward appearance of an inward conviction. It is not to save you. It's just to tell everybody, I'm not ashamed to identify with Jesus because he saved me. I'm going to get water baptized because he saved me. I'm going to take communion because he saved me. 
Man, I ain't let none of these folks put me back in bondage. Now, some of y'all may leave here and not come back next Sunday because you found out that whatever you thought was supposed to be churchy is not churchy here. Amen. Hmm. Your freedom. I just read it. Did y'all read 2 and 10? Did it say you are going to be free and you're going to be complete? Or did he say you are complete? And look at this, number 11. We've got to keep it moving. got to get y'all out of here. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision uh, made without hands and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So there's people right now that are still, uh, you know, saying in the Jewish faith that you got to be circumcised. That's under the law. And this scripture is saying you and I need to have the circumcision of the heart. The excess on your heart that is causing you to be defiled. Christ Jesus has given all of us circumcision. He's cut away the waste. Come on here. He's cut away the things that would make you defiled. He did that and it's not the circumcision of hand. There is no preacher that can circumcise you and tell you you are now right in the sight of God. But Christ has circumcised your heart. Shout glory. 11, 12, I'm sorry. 12, it says, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. In other words, it's all now what you and I are doing as a symbol of what has happened to us inside. Yes. And your conversion had to happen before you ever hit the water. Before you ever put on a long dress and a bun on the back of your head. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of folks that are sinners like to go to church to hide. What do you mean, Pastor? They haven't gave up sin, but they meet the criteria of the church. Uh-oh. Oh, no, the preacher ain't going to say nothing about your shacking. Your smoking or your doping, as long as you got on black and white on first Sunday. Hmm. Oh, I'll give you the real reason. As long as you drop that gold, don't wait to be told. Oh, yeah. Bring that money. It's all right. It's all right. Now, Lord, know your heart. How much you giving today? He really may take it back and let you. Oh, five more dollars. You, you good. You good. You good. Hmm. The church, in a general sense, puts people in bondage. Somebody say, I have already received the circumcision of my heart. And don't nobody know that but you. Because you can fake it in church. Hit that keyboard one time. You just cause you, uh, I'm feeling it. Uh, thank you, thank you. Somebody say, it's a show for a lot of people. They ain't really feeling God, but they said they couldn't get to Hollywood. They thought they stopped by the church. And... Now, I don't want nobody to get offended. Please don't get offended. But I don't believe none of y'all till we leave. Jump, get, grab that, and speak and swing from it. I ain't going to be impressed. How you live concerning Christ has to do with everything after you go through that door. I tell parents, don't testify on Sunday. Let your children testify for you. What will they say? Mama was cussing. She had me lying, telling the people she wasn't home. Mama said she ain't home. <laughs> Daddy be hiding in the garage, drunker than Cooley High. Just... Y'all get ready for church. <laughs> Honey, you got any scope or something? Clean my breath up here. I'm leading the prayer this morning. Lord, I'm coming as humble as I know how. <laughs> Y'all ain't supposed to be laughing in church. You're supposed to be real saved and just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many know I'm not trying to get to judgment day and get turned around? That's my point up here. I'm not trying to help y'all to get your feelings hurt on judgment day. I'm coming down your street now so you can understand that God required that we would honor him outside of these buildings, outside of 
the face of the preacher, away from all the church folks. What do they say about you on your job? What does your neighbor say about you? Do they see the light of Christ or do they see some mean, stuck up, religious person who won't speak to nobody? Because you know sinners live in my neighborhood. And I stay clear of them. I let them know I don't like them. <laughs> I wonder why if your house on fire they just look at it. <laughs> well, Jesus should have put the fire out for him. <laughs> okay, y'all get serious. We got to go. Shout glory. glory. Somebody say, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which art in heaven. Yes, that's what it said. I'm going to talk to you later, Sister Miller. Because she wanted me to do something yesterday and I didn't feel like doing it. But I should have done it. Should have done it. Holy Ghost good me right now. Because I got to preaching about neighbors and neighbors and I didn't messed up. Oh, so messed up. Get me Holy Ghost. Y'all seen the commercial? I meant the commercial, the cartoon where the guy gets shot a hundred times and then he drank water. He said, I didn't even get hit. bleeding all over this place up here right now Jesus come on help us today come on somebody say I'm so free I can hug a sinner I, I, I can speak to folks that I know living unrighteous come on somebody I can still be nice and, and, and not judge you and condemn you the Bible said with love and kindness have I drawn thee you so say that sin ain't going to rub off on you I mean, those sinners need hugs too. People that are still bound need to know how you got so free. Amen. Tell them before you got your big hat and your black and white suit on, you used to be a drug dealer. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Tell them how you lived with several women and several men before you got married. Y'all ain't going to say nothing now. Tell them how you were foolish and maybe you aborted a baby and now you acting like you don't understand these other women that have that same... You paid for the abortion. You won't tell that part. I want to get so saved and so free that I can tell you all my business and I don't care what you think of me because Christ already paid. Hallelujah! I got some more coming here. If I could shut up. Where we at? 14. He brought out the handwritings of the, the ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And has spoiled what? Principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. Triumphing over them in it. Somebody said Jesus is a show not bowler. Come on here. Jesus is powerful. Jesus is absolutely the greatest one that ever lived. He took all the powers of darkness away from Satan. Tell your neighbor he can't harm you no more. You are free in God right now. Shout glory. Okay, I ain't got time, but I'm going to quote it. Y'all can help me quote it. That Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I've given unto thee power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means be able to hurt you. Shout glory. That sounds like freedom to me. Nothing in his arsenal can hurt you. By no, somebody said, by no means. Whew. Do you know fear and anxiety is bondage? You can't go nowhere. You can't get on a plane. You, you can't do nothing. You, you afraid to go out now because of the enemies telling you they're going to shoot you? By no means shall Satan be able to hurt me. Hallelujah. I'm telling everybody today that Christ has made you free. On this 4th of July national holiday, get more free than a national holiday freedom. Get so free that you ain't scared of the devil no more. 
get so free that you know they're talking about you and you still act like you ain't heard nothing. Get so free that you don't respond to criticism anymore. Get so free that you don't care that you got haters and you got people that are always running you down. Get so free that you can just keep it moving. Mm -hmm. You got a whole lot of folks, the devil used this. He make them get hurt in church so they quit chasing Jesus. Oh yeah, got a whole bunch of people. I ain't going to church no more. Them people ain't right. Why do you think they were in there? They didn't ever had. It was obvious if they went to church, they were saying, Lord, help me. Amen. Oh, that's right. We don't do that much in church. Once we've been saved for a little while and we got the stink of sin off of us that is physical, we cleaned up, we're smelling good, we act like we still are not that same person that is dealing with some adverse situations. Please don't let nobody make you feel bad in church. Anybody make you feel bad in church, they hiding something. Yeah. Come here, come here, young lady. Come here to me. <laughs> and I mean, there's nothing wrong with the mothers teaching the young women, but you ought to do it with love and kindness. Mother, sit them down and say, let me tell you, baby. Mother was something else. Oh, I used to carry a razor in my pocket. Now, they ain't going to tell you that. They ain't going to tell you that. I smoke more dope than the best of them. <laughs> oh yeah, I was running around. I was running around on, 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 on my man, my husband. They ain't going to tell you that. Mm -mm. They ain't going to tell you how you need to get your dress down. You need to keep it down. And that's true, but tell them why. Because you'll end up just like me. On, With a baby or two that I don't know who the daddy is. Mic off, but I think y'all can still hear me. <laughs> I like being so free, I can blow my nose. There's some folks that's so bound up, they have to go all the way to the bathroom to blow their nose because I'm a human being. I ain't no angel. Hello. Sister Miller, she will tell you he is all human. I lives with the man. I see the covers rise up sometime. I said, I know what he done done. What is that? Why didn't you go to the bathroom? Well, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. <laughs> Y'all better get saved today. Y'all supposed to be in church. <sighs> let's move on real quick. It's about 12 after. Come on, let's get another one. Hebrews 9 and 27. Hebrews 9 and 27. I'm almost done, I promise y'all. 9 and 27. When I'm having fun, I like to stay all day, but I'm going to let y'all out. 9 and 27 of Hebrews, y'all there? As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after that... Uh, is that right? That's what it say? Uh, okay. I threw another one in there that I don't understand one. That got to do with being free. Okay. <laughs> but the truth, how many know we only got one trip through here? And how many know we better get it right now? Because there is no repentance on judgment day. You don't get to stand before God and say, God, I'm sorry now. No, you're sorry because you're now standing before the judgment. Got a lot of people crying in the courtroom. Got a lot of folks crying in the jail houses. A lot of folks crying because they lose their wife and their husband and their family. But how many know you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself? You need to pull your own coattail and say, hold up here, Bubba. You about to lose the best thing that ever happened to you. Amen. Can y'all stand up? I need you... Uh, Israel, whoever's running the controls back there, thank God for all these young people. But let's do this Corinthians. I'm always using it on communion day. I want y'all to get ready to get your communion. If you don't have your communion, you like to have communion, lift your hands and one of the ushers will bring it to you. You should have got it when you were on the door. But if you didn't get it, lift your hands. We'll get it to you. Okay. We need one over here for Brother Wright. I don't know who else. Anybody else? You need communion. 
Look at this. This is in 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, starting around the 23rd verse. I, I quote this in some of its uh, place on Communion Sunday, but today I wanted you to see it for yourself. 1 Corinthians, because we're free in Christ. Amen? And I want us to see why we take communion. I want us to understand this so we can remember that we are free. Amen? He said, do this in remembrance of me. What for? Remember that when you leave this building on today, you're still free. Remember when you get home and you get to the other side of town and, and wherever you're going on this holiday weekend, you're free. 1 Corinthians 11 and 23. It says, for I have received of the Lord that which uh, also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was portrayed took bread so that little piece of bread on the top of your communion cup we're going to get ready to take it not till I finish this though but just hold it amen I just want to read these verses first and the 24 verse says and when he had given thanks he break it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me so when we're eating this little piece of bread we are remembering that this representing as a symbol Christ's body was broken for us to do what? To break the power, oh my God, to break the chains of sin. The law of sin and death was removed because Christ's body was broken for us. Hallelujah. And it says in the 24th verse, uh, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Remembering when we take in the communion, it's our tradition here in New Life on first Sundays we take communion. And we'll see in these scriptures that it is not a law that you have to take it every first Sunday. It's not a law that you have to take it every time you meet. Some churches, every time they meet, they take communion. But how many know all of that's bondage? I tell y'all, you should read your Bibles and you should pray, but don't get in bondage to it. I didn't read enough today. I didn't pray enough today. I didn't, I didn't fast this week. And, and No, no. All of that is what you should do. But none of that makes you unsaved. See, what people make you think, you're not saved unless you follow these rules. Hmm. Come on, y'all. Look at this, 25. After he, the same manner, also he took the cup. When, the, uh, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood that uh, this do ye uh, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And again, he's telling you when we take communion, we're doing it because of the New Testament. What is the New Testament? Somebody say grace, forgiveness, mercy, that everything that you and I have ever done, Christ paid for it on Calvary's cross. And when we take the communion, we're remembering our freedom not just on 4th of July but every Sunday you free every week every moment of your life if you are a believer in Christ you are free I know y'all may be tired but shout glory. glory I can do that all day shout glory, glory. <laughs> Woo! alright come on I'm about done y'all hold on for as often as you as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. If you got communion at home today, I mean, that means what? Just a little juice and a little piece of bread. Join with us in taking communion. That means when you read the rest of this, though, hold up. Don't take it yet. Check this out. 27 says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. We don't have closed communion, but look what it says here in 20, uh, 28. He said, but let a man examine himself. 
And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. In other words, we don't have closed communion. I went to a church one time. I was a visiting minister and uh, uh, I wasn't in that church organization. And it was two or three hundred people in that church service. And the preacher let everybody know he can't have communion because he's not a part of our church. He denied me communion because he said, I don't belong to their organization. The word of God is not restricting us. It's human, all rules and regulations of church organizations. The scripture said I should have been able to examine myself. Am I right? You should be able to examine yourself whether you're going to take the communion or not. But I shouldn't tell you you're not saved. But if you know in your own heart, no, I'm really not doing what the Lord would have me to do at this particular time. I'm going to pass. Because how many know nobody got the no right to judge you? Well, I see you didn't take communion today. Get you some business. You ain't got none over here. Get you some business. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. God said, I need you to reverence what my son did for you. Don't play with it. Don't try to impress humans. Remember that what I've done for you, the Father is saying, I need you to honor his sacrifice. And if you're not ready to do that, and you've fallen back or whatever, I'm not perfect, nobody's here perfect, but the truth of the matter, there ought to be a reverence for God. For he that eateth and drinketh, them, okay, 30. Uh, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you. And many sleep. That sleep means they died because they took communion. Uh oh. Oh, because they was unworthy. I'm not judging you. You, uh, you can judge me, but I better judge myself. The preachers don't use this because they say they don't want to offend the people. For the person who woke up in hell would have woke up saying, I wish you had offended me. You got me killed because you told me it was all right. It was all right that you was. How many agree there still should be a reverence for God in our lives? I don't care what other folks are doing. The Bible is still, it's the same God. It's the same word. And God still, God still demands reverence for him. I don't care how many churches are now voting on whether or not a man can sleep with a man and a woman can sleep with a woman. I don't care how much they try to twist it and make it out that it's all right for folks to go ahead and drink and drug and party and act a fool. I believe there ought to be what the Bible says, a reverence for God. How I many the old school, them old folks, they, they had a reverence. They weren't perfect, but you know they wasn't playing when it come down to their Jesus. Amen. So the enemy switched it and made it more about looking like you saved instead of being saved. I want the ministers and the deacons to sit with their wives and husbands in church because that way we know if y'all really love each other. <laughs> you got all these religious churches where all the preachers on one side and the women on the other side. And no, I want husbands and wives to sit together so we can see how y'all fuss. Don't touch me. <laughs> I told you we're going to talk about it when we get back to the car. Leave me alone. <sighs> but in church, oh, praise the Lord. How you going to say praise the Lord and you ain't spoke to your wife or husband this week? We're still on prepared. Y'all got your little cups? I got it pretty easy over here, Sister Miller. I was over champagne struggling this morning trying to get it open. I got it open. Come on, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we reverence you right now. We that are going to partake of this Holy Communion, God, we are examining our own selves. We know the communion doesn't save us. We know that it symbolizes your broken body and your blood that was shed. And because of that, we experience freedom like we have never experienced before. The things we could not stop doing when we accepted you, you gave us some supernatural strength. 
and you took the taste of a lot of things where it no longer is a temptation. We're no longer bound. Hallelujah. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this represents my body which is broken for you. Take and eat. In the same light manner, he lifted up the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood which is shed for you. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it. Lord, I'm free. How's it go, Sister Miller? You got a mic there? Say that again. Say it again. One more time. Free to dance. Free to sing. And lift my hand. And worship. Lord, I'm free. How many can be free when you can't sing? You can still try to jump in and turn it, uh, Minister Greg, from a duet to a, to a triple. What do they call that when three people sing? Amen. Y'all keep standing. Everybody in here that don't know Christ, or if you do know him, come on and say, I accept Jesus. This is for you. This is not for Pastor Miller. We're not talking about joining New Life. We're not talking about being a part of a religious organization. We're talking of having uh, a right to the tree of life. And Jesus never requires you to get saved before you get saved. Did y'all catch that? He never requires you to be perfect before you accept him. Anytime people say, I'm going to get right, then I'm going to come to church. No, come like you are. Join the rest of us. We have taken on the free gift. That's the only thing that makes us right. Come on, somebody say, I accept Jesus now. By faith, I believe he came, he died, he rose on the third day for my freedom. I receive it and I thank you for loving me when I was not lovable. When I wasn't doing what was right, you died on that old rugged cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless y'all. Just remain standing. One of our ministers are going to come and bless our giving. Anybody here that don't know, we got boxes in the rear and over by the door. And you'll put it in there if you're going to sow into this ministry. This ministry is good ground. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you. And then your tithes is not for Pastor Miller. Your tithes is unto the Lord. Amen. And trust God. He said, prove me now. See, if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. I want you to be safe for the rest of the weekend. Amen. Be careful. Be watchful. Let the Holy Spirit uh, guide you, tell you where to go and not to go. Amen. Sister Miller and I, we're going to take off to Chicago as soon as we leave here to be with Aisha and Latoya. And uh, we're going to Flossmore. That's a suburb, so don't y'all have to sweat. We're not going to 63rd in Inglewood. <laughs> Some of y'all on the south side know what that means. But we're going to Flossmore. We're going with the wee, 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 monsieur people. <laughs> but you need to be saved wherever you go. Because how many know the enemy can come any place? You just need to be safe. Even if you're on 63rd in Inglewood, you need to be saved because God will protect you. Amen? So pray for us as we go and be with our daughters and some of our grandbabies. And uh, God bless all y'all. Have a wonderful 4th of July. And I love you with the God kind of love. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm going to wipe this one. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Glory. You just have it. Thank you.
let us pray for the tithes and offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you today that you have allowed us to be able to give back to you more than what you've given to us. Lord, we ask you now to take the tithes and storehouse, that they be meat in my house. And we know, God, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you have room enough to receive. Lord, as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, bring us back to appointed time, give us safe travel, sweet sleep, and let us come together again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.